Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome back to the immunology lectures and we were discussing in our last uh, lecture we were discussing about the hypersensitivity. We discussed about type 1 and a little bit about the type 2 hypersensitivity and uh, while discussing about uh, type 2 hypersensitivity I was uh, giving an example of this uh, very serious issue of erythroblastosis fetalis. And what this erythroblastosis fetalis actually is? So, erythroblastosis fetalis as I told is a very severe uh, hemolytic condition that can initiate if a mother, mother's blood has, does not have the Rh antigen. So, if the mother is basically Rh negative and if uh, the fetus has Rh positive antigens. So, it is Rh positive. Now, during the first pregnancy, there is no blood mixing usually, very little uh, blood actually comes from uh, the fetus to the mother, which is not sufficient to elicit any uh, immune response maybe. But during the delivery, there is mixing of the fetal blood with the mother's circulation, with the mother's blood and that can actually lead to the activation of the Rh specific B cells. Now, these B cells when they are activated, they will uh, differentiate into the plasma cells and the memory B cells. The dangerous part is the memory because they will remember what they have encountered. So, they have encountered the Rh antigen. So, now they will develop a memory against this Rh antigen of this fetus and, and of course, the plasma cells they will secrete the immunoglobulins which will actually clear the uh, uh, Rh positive cells, but the memory will be there. Now, in the second pregnancy when the mother will again have, if, if the mother conceives again second time then there is a threat for the fetus. Now, then the fetal blood if it enters into the mother system little bit, then that this Rh antigens will now elicit a second immune response and now it can activate the memory cells because it has the memory cells. So, now the mother has the memory. So, now the mother will start to produce the immunoglobulin and it will start producing this IgG. And this IgG can actually cross the placental barrier and it can go into the fetus. And if it goes into the fetus, then it can elicit a immune response and that can lead to very deleterious effect on the fetus. So, now it can uh, uh, try to uh, lyse the cells, so lyse the RBC, the fetal RBC. So, that can be very dangerous. So, usually but uh, thank God we now we have a uh, remedy to this, but thank God that uh, we have this an antibody against this uh, Rh antigens. So, if the mother is detected with our Rh negative nowadays, if a mother is detected with the Rh negative and the fetus is detected with the Rh positive during the first delivery. So, immediately after the delivery within 24 to 48 hours of the delivery, the mother is injected with the antibody called the rogam. So, it is called the rogam. So, this is basically the antibody against the Rh antigens which the mother is immediately injected with. Why? Now, because this antibody will now go into the mother's uh, system and will immediately clear up all the Rh positive uh, uh, antigens or the cells that has entered into the mother system from the fetus. So, that 
it can stop the memory so that there is no memory B cell formation. So, there is no memory B cell. So, no B cell activation, no memory B cell formation. And if the mother does not have the memory of this Rh antigen, then there is no problem, then uh, uh, she can uh, safely have a second uh, pregnancy and it is not a problem. So, this rogam is uh, a very, uh, uh, very good advancement in terms of uh, this uh, dealing with this type 2 hypersensitivity which is described as the erythroblastosis fetalis. We have learnt uh, about the type 1, type 2 hypersensitivities and I shortly very quickly mentioned about the other two types of hypersensitivity reactions that are also uh, we deal with. One is the type 3 hypersensitivity, another is type 4 hypersensitivity. Now, type 3 hypersensitivity is mostly mediated by the immune complexes. So, it is the immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. Now, what is the immune complex mediated hypersensitivity and why can uh, such a hypersensitivity occur in our system? So, as in the beginning I told hypersensitivity reactions are kind of inappropriate response of the immune system. So, it is not a very uh, correct uh, uh, way of responding. So, it, it is usually an inappropriate uh, response and type 3 hypersensitivity occurs from if there is a huge amount of immune complexes being formed within the system and that can also occur from antigens which are, so the antigens that are not very, uh, these are weak antigens let us say for example. So, they can also elicit uh, this kind of uh, hypersensitivity reactions like the type 3 reactions. And type 3 and, um, uh, hypersensitivity primarily occurs when this antigen antibody uh, complexes are formed on certain locations where they should not have formed for example, where they should not have formed. Now, what this, uh, how, how does an antibody work normally? So, an antibody goes and binds to the target antigen, preferably on the surface of the target cell and then there, there are processes like neutralization, opsonization, complement activation, all these uh, processes will immediately start in anti, 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 when there is an antibody antigen binding. So, that is basically it initiates the clearing of the pathogen by phagocytosis. So, again uh, if you if you if you look back to your complement uh, classes then ultimately activation of complements would lead to opsonization or would lead to membrane attack complex formation and killing of the target cell. Now, if there is nothing to phagocytose, there is no cell to phagocytose. So, what will the immune system do? What will this complex do? So, then the cell or the phagocytic cell that will try to phagocytose the complex, the antigen antibody complex. And this there is if there is this kind of huge antigen antibody complex formation in huge amounts, particularly on the and there is deposition of these antigen antibody complexes particularly on the blood vessels or any other tissues that can start or initiate or elicit a response which we describe as a type 3 response. And type 3 response or type 3 uh, hypersensitivity responses are primarily mediated by complement activation. So, the cleavage products of the complement, uh, um, the complement proteins like the C3A. So, when we were starting about the complements, if you remember, uh, I told that the complement proteins when they are cleaved they form the two types of products the A and the B. So, there is C 3 breaks down into C 3 A and C 3 B, 4 breaks down into 4 A and 4 B. So, the smaller products which are the soluble products which actually are not the membrane bound products. The membrane bound products are the bigger ones or the B for example, it is a con normal convention is like that. So, C 3 B for example, which is a membrane bound uh, form. So, 
these smaller cleavage products, the soluble smaller cleavage products, which are also sometimes called the anaphyla toxins like the C3A, the uh, C4A, the C5A, they are kind of responsible for eliciting inflammatory responses. So, they can enhance inflammation, they have a role in enhancement of inflammation. And that is what this type 3 uh, hypersensitivity reactions actually occur through. So, and they are mostly initiated by uh, the neutrophils basically, because neutrophils uh, as we described uh, several times I have told that the neutrophils are the fastest acting cell of the immune system. So, they move to the site of action the first they are the first cells that will go to the site of action immediately migrate to the and they will infiltrate the whole site of action try to engulf the pathogen do a lot of things immediately and they will send signals to all other cells and bring more cells there all these things starts happening immediately. So, the neutrophils are the major mediators of this uh, uh, hypersensitivity reaction this uh, type this antigen antibody complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction. So, what actually happens is, so whenever there is a, there is a response against an antigen like this and you see, so whenever there is an antigen antibody complex that is being formed, a complex like this is formed. Now, this complex now this antigen antibody complex that is being formed or deposited somewhere that can actually lead to activation of the complements. So, there can be complement activation. And of course, whenever there is complement activation, one of the major products of complement activation of the complement cleavage is C3B. So, the main the central protein in the complement activation is the C3B and of course, there are other complement cleavage products like the C3A, the C4A the C 5 A all these are present as well. Now, this C 3 B, the C 3 B they can actually bind to the surface of the cells and they can also bind to the um, cell surface receptors as well. So, this uh, for example, the neutrophils the neutrophils on the surface they expresses this kind of complement receptors for example, CR1 and these uh, complement proteins they can this complement cleavage proteins they can bind on the surface of the neutrophils and as well these cleavage products what does these cleavage products do? These cleavage products they can also have dual functions. So, these cleavage products can also bind to the cell surface receptors as well as these cleavage products. If you remember from our classes of inflammation on our lectures on inflammation, these cleavage products can also help in migration of more neutrophils. So, neutrophils can migrate from the blood into the site of action by the action of the complement cleavage product. So, they act as chemoattractants. So, these, uh, these kind of co smaller complement cleavage products are soluble complement cleavage products the C 3 A, 4 A, 5 A they can act as uh, chemoattractants as well and they can attract more of these uh, neutrophils C 3 A, 4 A, 5A for example, they can attract more neutrophils to the site of action.
and by so opening up the so there uh, as I told these immune complexes that are deposited these immune complexes can uh, elicit the complement activation pathway and uh, so it elicits the complement pathway and in this complement pathway you can actually have this cleavage product. So, either you can have the soluble cleavage products like the C3A, C4A, C5A or this kind of C3B. So, uh, we have learnt in our complement class that the C3B is one of the central cleavage products in the complement activation pathway which mediates a lot of function. So, the C3B can actually go and bind to the uh, target cells, they can uh, 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 bind to the target cells, they can also produce more C3 convertases, C5 convertases and helps in cleavage of C3, more C3 and more C5. So, C3B is one of the central com uh, components of the complement uh, cleavage pathway. And also we have this uh, soluble uh, cleavage products like this C3A, C4A or 5A which we describe together or collectively as the anaphyla toxins and they can also perform a lot of functions primarily their function is to enhance the inflammatory responses. So, they enhance inflammation how do they enhance inflammation? So, what they do is they can perform a lot of functions they can also bind to the complement receptors on the surface of the neutrophils and other leukocytes they those cells which express this kind of complement receptors of course. So, most of the APCs like the macrophages or the neutrophils they express on their surface the complement receptors like the CR1 for example and they can also help in the migration of the neutrophils as well as they can bind to the cell surface receptors on the mast cells or the basophils. What are the mast cells and the basophils? They have the granules containing the histamine. So, they are the granulocytes. So, they can produce histamine. So, now if this C 3 A 4 A or the 5 A they can bind also on the cell surface receptors of this kind of mast cells and that can actually lead to the release of vasoactive amines like histamine and this in turn can lead to opening of this high endothelial venules in the blood vessels and also helps in the migration of the neutrophils. So, the neutrophil uh, migration we have learned uh, as well. So, there is rolling activation and then there is migration of the neutrophils they migrate and they migrate to the site of action. So, this is a kind of a combined effect from the complement pathway activation from the formation of the uh, this kind of immune complexes here and this immune complexes they elicit the response via activation of the complement pathway formation of this complement cleavage products which can have many roles many functions they can uh, help in release of histamines, they can help in uh, uh, bind to the surface of the uh, neutrophils, the cell surface complement receptors of the neutrophils, they can help also in migration of the neutrophils because these complement cleavage products also acts as chemoattractants just similar to the chemokines we have uh, described previously. So, they can also help in migration of these uh, neutrophils to the localized to the site of action and that can lead to release of many lytic enzymes. As I told these neutrophils, so they cannot really they, they try to phagocytose this, um, in this antigen antibody complex that is being formed and in this process they start releasing this lytic enzymes and from there what we see is the local this is a local uh, hypersensitive reaction. So, a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction can usually be a local reaction also it can be a systemic reaction it can be a, a global response as well. How does this kind of global responses do they occur? So, uh, for example, uh, 
we have a snake bite. When, when you have a snake bite, you will administer with an antivenom. But this antivenom usually is raised in a different animal, let us say for example in horse. So, you are basically uh, and then you have get the antibodies from there and these antibodies against the snake venom is being administered to the patient. But along with that antibodies of the against the snake venom, you are also sometimes injecting a little bit of antigens from the horse serum and that can elicit a systemic response in that patient as well. And that is also a type 3 hypersensitivity and it can be a systemic hypersensitivity. Sometimes also it is referred to as serum, serum sickness. It is also sometimes called as the serum sickness that can also lead to a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction because of the formation of the antigen antibody uh, complexes and deposition of these antigen antibody complexes on the blood vessels or um, uh, on the basements of the membrane and uh, that can actually lead to phagocytosis of these antigen antibody complexes by the neutrophils and elicit this kind of responses. Sometimes uh, um, uh, some people who are very sensitive to certain kind of allergens like for example, uh, you have an insect bite, you can immediately develop a type 1 in a hypersensitivity reaction. But you can also develop a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction after a few hours maybe. So, not immediately after there is an antigen antibody complex formation and deposition of the antigen antibody complexes, you can also start to develop a type 3 response in those cases as well. So, uh, these um, hypersensitivity reactions, so these are kind of as I told or in the beginning, these are kind of inappropriate responses. The immune system really does not know what to do and it starts uh, uh, responding in this way and uh, some people can develop these kind of uh, reactions. So, um, going back to the different types of the um, hypersensitivity reaction, so this is type 3 and as I told there is another there is a type 4. So, all the hypersensitivity reactions that we have described so far, we have seen there is somewhere involvement of the humoral branch of the immunity. That means, you have the role of the antibodies, be it the IgE or it is the IgG or there is the antigen antibody complex. We have seen it is mostly being elicited from the humoral branch of the immunity. So, you have the role of the antibodies, but there can be another type of hypersensitivity reaction which is cell mediated. So, basically from the T cell mediated, it is basically mediated by the T cell. So, initially uh, it was people uh, thought I mean the exact T cells were not really assigned for this kind of hypersensitive reactions and they were known as the T uh, DTH. So, this type 4 hypersensitivity reactions were also sometimes described as the delayed type hypersensitivity because it does not occur immediately. So, it is a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. and it does not really occur immediately after exposure to the antigen. So, it can take some time like 1, 2 or 3 days. So, that is why it is also called the delayed type hypersensitivity and initially this subset of T cells which actually mediate this kind of hypersensitivity reactions, they were named as T DTH. Later on, it was basically found it was a small subset of the uh, T cells which are mostly uh, the Th1 cells basically and to some extent CD8 plus uh, cytotoxic T cells are also involved, but it is mostly the Th1 cells. So, the Th1 effector cells which are responsible for this delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. Now, what this delayed type hypersensitivity reaction actually that elicits from? So, it elicits from mainly the antigen presenting cells and primarily the dendritic cells which are present in the epidermal 
region. So, in the epidermis, the Langerhans cells, let us say. So, these Langerhans cells, they can basically, so, so they can basically, they interact with the antigen and they can present this antigen which can then prime with a CD4 plus T helper cell, a TH1 cell. And this priming, so there is a priming with the T helper cell, so they can activate this T helper uh, 1 class of cells uh, when there is binding of this uh, antigen. Uh, and presentation of this antigen to the uh, Th1 type uh, cells, they can actually lead to activation of the T cells and they can start secreting different types of cytokines. If you remember the classes, uh, the, my lectures from the cytokines, then you will see what are the different types of cytokines that are being released this by this kind of Th1 cells. And uh, these are mostly mediated by for example, the tumor necrosis factor, the TNF alpha, the INF interferon gamma, these are all or interleukin 3, IL3 or GM CSF and that leads to uh, uh, that brings more and more of these macrophages and these macrophages, this, this interaction in turn, they can activate a macrophage and activation of, so if there is an activation of macrophage, so there is an activated macrophage can in turn produce a lot of cytokines and these cytokines in, in turn they can lead to there are many pro inflammatory cytokines that are being released that can lead to inflammatory responses. So, they can uh, uh, lead to local swelling, redness, itching and all these things can occur and you can see a uh, delayed response to uh, such kind of an antigen. So, a very good example of delayed response to, uh, hypersensitivity is the MONTU test. If you have uh, heard about the MONTU test, it is a very, very common uh, uh, type of uh, test against MTB for example, my, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, if you go to any pa pathological center, uh, previously uh, people used to do a MONTU test and they used to inject uh, a mixture of uh, peptides and carbohydrates isolated from the MTB uh, which is also known as uh, tuberculin. So, this uh, antigen, it is being injected intradermally, so under the skin and then you wait for 2 days and if you see after 1, 2, 3 days, if there is a small redness and uh, swelling in that area, then basically you will conclude that you can have a, uh, that person has an exposure to MTB. So, it had been exposed to the TB or MTB and these kind of responses are usually delayed responses. So, because they need activation of this uh, involvement of these uh, T helper cells and activation of the T helper cells that can uh, lead to release of this kind of cytokines and this is mostly this uh, uh, inflammatory cytokines which leads to this kind of inflammations and also activated they can also activate the macrophages locally and the, the tissue macrophages and uh, then you can have this kind of inflammatory responses. So, uh, overall we have uh, kind of learned uh, four different types of uh, hypersensitivity reactions that the immune uh, system uh, actually shows against different types of uh, allergens, different types of um, antigens and the type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, it is very easy to remember the different types of uh, hypersensitivity reaction. So, all type 1 to 3, the first 3 types of this uh, uh, hypersensitivity reaction is mediated by antigen antibody. So, it is mostly antibody mediated and of which type 1 is mediated by IgE, 
type 2 is mediated by IgG and type 3 is mediated by an immune complex that is a complex antigen antibody complex uh, formation and um, uh, the type 1 hypersensitivity is primarily mediated by degranulation of the mast cells, the basophils and all this. Uh, type 2 hypersensitivity can occur by complement activation, formation of the membrane attack complex, lysis of the target cell and also by ADCC. And type 3 hypersensitivity as I uh, described it is mostly uh, by the formation of the antigen antibody complexes and thereby uh, mostly mediated by the neutrophils and also uh, to some extent by the mast cells by release of histamines and the type 4 hypersensitivity is mostly T cell mediated hypersensitivity. So, it is by a small subset of the T cells uh, which actually mediates uh, this kind of hypersensitivity uh, reactions and it is mostly due to the release of the different uh, cytokines that elicits or enhances the inflammation inflammatory responses. So, that elicits more uh, inflammatory responses. So, this is uh, all uh, about the hypersensitivity. I have tried to keep it uh, 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 very uh, in the basic uh, uh, part and lucidly. So, you will uh, if you want to read more about this uh, hypersensitivity reactions, you can refer to any of the books that we have uh, already um, uh, referred like um, uh, Kubi or um, uh, Genway, all these books, they describe all these uh, hypersensitivity uh, reactions very clearly. You can go through those books to get a much clearer idea about it and uh, hope you have uh, enjoyed the lectures uh, so far and thank you very much.